Hi guys, had a request from uh, this person. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce the name. Well, Stephen, I expect, but I don't know how you pronounce that. Um, he wanted a fast rubber band powered car. Now, I don't try to make them fast. I did in the past. I did a few and tried to time them, which is a problem when you're trying to time things. Unless you go in a long distance, you really can't do much measuring speed over a short distance. Uh, the time it takes you to press the stopwatch is the difference between a fast and a slow car. I'll put some links in the video description to some of my old videos where I actually built an electronic timer to try and time them. Anyway, enough of that. The simple basics of making a fast rubber band powered car. The bigger the wheels, the faster it will go eventually. Smaller wheels will accelerate faster. Uh, it's just gearing, basically. If you use small wheels, they'll have so much power put through to them that they'll probably spin. So instead of going forwards, they sit there spinning. Even the CDs that I use regularly spin if I put lots of rubber bands on. Um, yeah, rubber bands. The more rubber bands you put on, the more power you've got. So depending on what your task is you may be limited on the number of rubber bands you can use you may only be able to use one or something like that so you're gonna to have to find a balance between the amount of power you have the size of the wheels also the size of the axle will make a difference if you use very thin axles you will get a longer distance because you can wrap rubber bands around them more but you won't get as much torque a thicker axle will give you more torque so you'll get faster acceleration but you won't go so far because when you wrap the, wrap the rubber band around it you won't get so many turns around it because it's thicker uh, so what am I going to do for a demonstration this is one of my old rubber band powered cars. It's actually made of aluminium knitting needles and 3D printed axle stands. I've also printed a little hook to go on there to make it easy to connect the rubber band. It will actually run either way up. It doesn't make any difference. And what I've just done is I've glued this bit of cardboard on. So that when it hits the wall at the other end, it hits the cardboard rather than the CDs, because the CDs will shatter if they hit something hard. Oh, the CDs are on 3D printed hubs as well. And in fact, I have noticed that one there has got a crack in it anyway. I think it will still run. It just, um, well, it is cracked already. So what we'll do is we'll put some rubber bands on it, have a look, see if the wheels spin, and then I will probably put strips cut from balloons around the outside to give it grip. My favourite way of giving it grip is to cut up uh, rubber gloves, the sorts you use for washing up, because they're a slightly thicker rubber and they last longer. If you cut balloons up and put them on there, they wear out after just a few runs. So my preference is rubber gloves, but I haven't got any, but I have got some balloons. So we'll put some rubber bands on there and we'll give it a run. And I've just realized because I've glued this on here, normally I'd actually attach the rubber bands through those slots. But because I've put the glue on there, I can't do that. So I'll just have a little think. I'll sort that out. Easy thing is just push a hole through there. 
so we can go right the way through. And then we'll have a run. Right, got a rubber band on there, just a single strand. And we'll see how we go. Nice slow start. So that's okay. We'll now try it with more rubber bands and see if we can get the wheels to spin. Double the rubber bands. Oh, yes. And that was your wheel spin. So you're not going to go anywhere if you're wasting power with wheel spin. We'll now try putting the balloons on there and see if that works. That'll be interesting with the split wheel. I have a couple of balloons. So bigger balloons would be easier. This is what I've got. Cut the bottom off. Cut the top off. So you've got a strip. Like that. There is a knack to doing this, and I haven't done it in a long time. Oh, looks like I was successful. Okay, I'll do the other one. The split one and see how we get on. And if this doesn't work, the other thing you can use is a launch mat, a rubber mat, to actually start it on. That gives it grip to get going. And then once it's going, it doesn't need that extra grip. <laughs> That's probably going to make it split. Well, we're on there for now. Just even it up a bit. Okay, we have rubber tires. You don't normally need rubber tires on the front unless it's, um, well, it, it can fishtail and that can push the front tires offline, front wheels offline. But we'll try it like that. And then the other thing you can do is add weight. That'll help the back wheels grip as well. But obviously the more weight you add, um, you're going to slow the car down because you're increasing the mass. go so rubber tires help grip i could keep going i could add more power and then we could add weight to the back to keep the demonstration going but i think that's long enough just to give you the general idea so more power the wheels will spin rubber tires will help that 